What's up guys, Matt Boyle here. Today I want to share with you a video about my three-pronged approach to job hunting for university teaching jobs in China. So, uh, I want you to think about job hunting uh, with three strategies working together in concert. And we're going to start with the foundation. So what's the foundation? And this may be hard if you're just getting started uh, looking for jobs in China or you've never taught in China before. But the foundation is something that you can start laying from day one. And that is your network and networking. You need to set up a WeChat, a LinkedIn, and Skype. Skype is a way that people are going to do video interviews with you and also stay in touch with you and it's used by employers in China. LinkedIn is a great way to develop relationships with recruiters and stay in touch with recruiters and let China's job recruiters know that you are a teacher who's available and looking for work in China. And WeChat is probably the most popular instant messaging system that people use uh, in China and it's a number that often gets exchanged when you're looking for jobs. So those are some places where you can start building that online presence and hopefully if you cultivate that, that's going to be a way uh, where jobs come to you and where you can also search for jobs. But it's also going to be a way that people can reach out for you when they have opportunities. So that's the first strategy and that's laying your foundation. Okay, let's move up a level. The next level is going to be more platonic. It's more what you what you see is what you get. And that's when you go online and you search for jobs uh, and you just see what's out there and what, what kind of openings there are. And there's a bunch of websites that routinely post job openings. Teachers are always in demand in China. The university ones can be a little bit harder to find, but they're there and you can find them throughout the year, but primarily in the spring, which is when uh, a, a lot of things are in flux. A lot of teachers are saying that they're not gonna stay on, and that's when people start, well, that's when universities start doing their hiring for the fall. Um, the only difficulty and the danger with this is kind of weeding through all the jobs that aren't so good and the, the more shady posts and trying to figure out, okay, am I going to be sent to the middle of nowhere for not that great of salary? And so for this, I, I need you to watch my other video on salaries where I lay out what I think is a good average for a very average school in terms of the salaries and the benefits. Um, but this is the this is the middle level. This is something that you can count on. Given, giving yourself a few weeks, this is something that you can definitely I think rely on it can be your fallback it can it can be your plan a or your plan b um, and uh, when you search online if you're diligent enough about your search i think you're definitely going to find something out there okay but this this is the more this is the middle level this is you what you see is what you get they post an opening you respond you have the proper experiences and credentials for that job you get that job I would also recommend that you apply for jobs that you might think you're a little underqualified for, just to see what comes back. Because sometimes universities have trouble getting teachers, and they'll take you even if you don't quite meet the requirements that they've posted. Obviously, they're trying to attract a higher quality candidate if they can, but if they can't, then that might be your ticket to uh, slide in there. So we've talked about the foundation, which is networking. We've talked about the next level up. Uh, I don't know what we can call this in my in my um, metaphor, the scaffolding or the the main frame of your house. <laughs> and the upper level is you putting yourself out there and directly contacting schools that you might be interested in. This part requires you to be more active and outgoing. Okay, but uh, with this, uh, 
it's quite, and I know some people who swear by this method, they, they prefer doing this rather than just responding to job offers that are posted online because they say the people who are posting all the, all the openings online are the desperate ones. And there may be something to that. So it's good to balance that with contacting universities yourself and uh, this will let you uh, get ahead of the crowd and seize opportunities that aren't even there yet or are just about to be there in a way uh, because you are contacting universities you're putting the bug in your ear the, you're you're putting the bug in their ear that you're out there that you're available way before the opportunities are starting to open up so you can contact universities directly and how do you do that? Well, every city of uh, worth its salt has a Wikipedia page, and on their Wikipedia page, there's a, there'll be an education section where it lists the notable universities, and from there you can go to the university's websites and find the contact information. The disadvantage of this route is that <clears throat> sometimes you invest a lot of time and energy into uh, contacting universities either by email or by phone and you don't get the response back that you're looking for sometimes people they don't reply at all sometimes they reply really really late or sometimes there's simply no openings uh, but this is you putting in the work this is boots on the ground this is this is ground zero type work and it can reward you with an opportunity that nobody else saw online anywhere else so these are the three points that I recommend you keep in mind and keep them working in concert. The foundation, which is networking, cultivating that ground so that pays dividends to you in the future and you can just receive offers from people because they know that you're out there, they know you're available. The next level up is responding and applying to job opportunities that are there, that are listed online. And the third level the third tier is you actively calling uh, and sending your emails and resumes to schools. <clears throat> but for any of these things, you need to make sure that you leave yourself enough time to get good results, and you also need to make sure you have all the documentation prepared that the schools are going to want to see. And that's beyond the scope of this video, but you need to have things like your resume and your diplomas and perhaps like a letter of intent or scanned passport. You need to have all that stuff in a folder on your computer ready to go so that you can, when you apply to places, that's not slowing you down. Okay, I think that's about it for today's video. If what I said today helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions related to this topic, feel free to post them below and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.